Hello and welcome to another segment of DSU Inside Perspective. This is a historic segment, part two of our interview with Dr. Harry Williams, who's leaving us to become the CEO and president of uh, the Thurgood Marshall College Fund after eight years as the president of this institution. Dr. Williams, we're going to continue this All interview right, here. Before I go, we're, there's a lot to talk about when it comes to your tenure, almost eight year tenure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I got to stop a minute because prior to your arrival, we really didn't have a first lady here since Dr. DeLauder, who right. retired in 2003. Vermeil right. DeLauder, she was the first lady to the university during his 16-year tenure. Right. But then we had Dr. Sessoms, who actually came here as a bachelor. Okay. And then um, he got married in the middle of his tenure, but she never really jumped into the role of first lady. Right. But your wife has been a first lady. <laughs> yes. How yeah. important has that been to your tenure to have her by your side and as, as a part of the university right. as first lady? Well, it was very important because my wife, Robin, uh, is also a former college uh, professor, mm -hmm. a tenure professor. So that's a little bit different because she had her own career that she was moving mm -hmm. and she supported me. And in coming here, uh, she was the first uh, first lady with a doctorate. Yes. Uh, and someone who had a clear passion for education mm -hmm. and a clear passion for students. And she also was an, an associate dean uh, at a historically black college in North Carolina, mm -hmm. North Carolina Central, mm -hmm. when she, was, she worked there and when she moved here. Uh, so she had, she brought something unique to the, to the role, and she had a a clear understanding of the importance of the role and what it represents. And the, the biggest piece of it uh, uh, centers around being a good role model uh, for our students mm -hmm. and showing, you know, one thing about Delaware State is so special is that it's a family atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And part of that family atmosphere generates with your leadership. Mm -hmm. And we were, we also, when we came here, we had two little boys. Uh, Austin, uh, he had just turned, um, he was 14, and Gavin, my youngest, was nine. So we had a family that was in the, in the president's house on campus. So that, that's another nurturing type environment. So you had, you had a first lady who was a mother raising two boys, and so now we just inherited, at the time, over 3,800 uh, students. So she took that role very seriously and, and actually started the ladies' tea which was something that was uh, something she wanted to get going here uh, at the school, which will be part of her legacy. She also started an uh, initiative to raise funds for, uh, for the honors program and mm -hmm. things of that nature. So she's been engaged in a lot of the uh, community activities that I'm involved with. In the role of a president, you, you are very, very engaged. Mm -hmm. And we also have a lot of activities at the house. So she had to make sure everything was done right mm -hmm. at the house. When we had dignitaries come over to the house, we had to make sure everything was laid out properly. So yeah, she played. She has played a major mm -hmm. role in the success of what has taken place here at Delaware State. And with her starting at First Lady C, that caused you to start that gentleman's brunch, didn't it? We started a gentleman's brunch, uh -huh. and that is something that uh, that does a spinoff to her First Lady uh, event, mm -hmm. which has turned out to be something that's very mm -hmm. positive for our for our young men. We, we were talking about on the first part the Inspire Scholarship and the relationship with the legislature and there just seems to be a lot of momentum going there. Your first five years of your tenure we had record enrollment. Yep. And, yep. and, and then we had we kind of stayed around we, we, we got all the way up to 4,644 students in right. 2014. Right. Then we kind of stayed around 4,600 and then this year, I guess most appropriate yeah. because it's your last year, we yeah. broke a record this year again with 4,648 right, students. Right. Uh, I mean, th th explain that to me. How did that work that we just started blowing up in terms of our enrollment like that? Well, I tell you, part of it is the fact of the matter that Delaware State is, a, is an outstanding university. Mm -hmm. And the other fact of the matter, we have students literally from all over the world attending here. Mm -hmm. And we have never had a, a real issue or challenge in, in, a, in a, attracting students. Part of our challenge was making sure we had the infrastructure in place to support them once they arrived. And we worked really hard at trying to do that. We also looked at different markets uh, for students mm -hmm. and not only uh, our uh, domestic market, mm -hmm. 
we went outside of the United States, mm -hmm. uh, which was something that was different. Uh, we went to China, we went to South Korea, we went to Africa, we went to Jamaica, mm -hmm. we went all we went to Costa Rica. So we have students literally from all over those places, students from Russia here at our institution. So part of our diversity, you know, one of our major core values is diversity. So it's important for us to have students from all over reflected here. This is truly America when you mm -hmm. come on this campus. Mm -hmm. You have students literally from all over, have faculty from all over, and it's a great place to, to, to learn. It's a great environment in terms of moving and students growing up to become what they're going to become, which will be great citizens in this country mm -hmm. uh, and great citizens in their own country when they return mm -hmm. back to their respected country. So we, we take a great deal of pride in doing that. And we had a, a razor focus. And I would tell the senior staff that there's nothing more important than enrollment, nothing. Because mm -hmm. it's, if you don't have enrollment, your school will die. And you gotta have a continuous process of that enrollment. Mm -hmm. You gotta have a continuous process of students coming in and coming out and graduating. So we put, we put a lot of emphasis around student success, put a lot of emphasis around students uh, matriculating and graduating, and then continuing that process of developing those strong ties. And a scholarship helped as well. Mm -hmm. You know, when we got the Inspire Scholarship, uh, it stopped the bleeding. What I mean by that, it stopped the bleeding of our in-state students not coming here. We actually plugged that up, and we now have more students here from mm -hmm. Delaware than we have from out of state, which mm -hmm. is something that's important for our legislators. We value our students mm -hmm. from out of state, but this is a state school, so part of the taxpayers of this state, they want to make sure that their revenue that, you, that they're using, that we're investing in the citizens of the state, where the, most of the students will end up staying here, and, that, and we put that back into the economy of the state of, of Delaware. What you're talking about is our enrollment management process, and, and, and if the truth be known, you kind of helped us yep. with that before yep. you even became provost here because yep. you were part of that no Levitt yep. uh, consultant group right. that came yep. and kind of helped bring us up to speed yep. on that. But since you've been here, you've been able to put some more metal behind, what do you call it? metal <laughs> behind the pedal <laughs> yeah. there, yeah. where yeah. enrollment management is concerned. Uh, and, and, and with that, over the last five years, we've been able to kind of uh, achieve something that we had not been able to achieve that's in right. terms of our retention. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, that's how, right. What did we do to finally kind of make the inroads that we felt that we were capable of with, it, with, with respect to retention? We were Reaching 70% yeah, for yeah. five years in a row. All right. So what, what we have, with the focus on student success, we were able to, because of the, 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 the success that we were experiencing, and because of the support, mm -hmm. we were able to attract the attention from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Okay. They saw us. They said, we want to learn more about what you're doing at Delaware State. Mm -hmm. And part of that process, it created an opportunity for me to go out to Seattle, actually to meet with Bill Gates, mm -hmm. and to talk about what we are doing here at Delaware State to improve retention and graduation of our students. And actually, Mr. Gates liked what I said and they funded us with a major grant uh, from the Gates Foundation, and we used that grant to build on to support our infrastructure and to create a, a computer-based program that is designed specifically to track our students when they get here, mm -hmm. right on through graduation. So we have seen a significant increase in the number of students returning back to start mm -hmm. their second year because there's a, it's a whole inclusive process where we got a faculty engaged, got mm -hmm. a staff engaged, everybody's part of that process. So when students, so you're going to see our graduation numbers will improve, mm -hmm. our retention numbers, uh, they have improved significantly. So you can tie that to our record enrollment as well because retention, uh, the more students you can keep in and coming back, the more stability you will have at your institution. And we've been uh, actually a model in the country for doing that and doing it very well. Mm -hmm. Going back to the legislators, this involvement with Gates, and I hope you're not taking Gates with you, so good, yes. okay? We're going to still be involved with yeah. them, I hope. Right, but absolutely. But this, I mean, this kind, of, this kind of created a buzz about Delaware State University to have someone like the Bill Gates Foundation, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, involved, interested in what we right. were doing. Right. And it seems like, did that help your relationship even more with the legislators, seeing that you're about serious of business here? Well, we, we had a strong relationship with legislators, but what that did is just cemented the relationship mm -hmm. because, you know, we are judged by the people we hang out with. Mm -hmm. Think about that. Yeah. 
What I mean by that, you know, people, you, if you, if you want to be a millionaire, you need to hang with a millionaire. Okay, because that's how a millionaire is going to work, mm -hmm. right? So if you, if you want to make sure you're around students who are highly motivated mm -hmm. and want to be successful, and so you create, pro you create opportunities for students to be with each other mm -hmm. in that environment, and it builds on top of that from that, from that perspective. So when we got connected with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, people started saying, they started paying attention. They said, whoa, what, what are they doing over there that's attracting this type of attention? Mm -hmm. And by, so part of it is making sure that we're executing on what we said we're gonna do and carry that out. Mm -hmm. And so by attracting them, we were able to attract other funders like Apple. Mm -hmm. You know, we have students who are right. connected with the Apple right. project. We got uh, other funders like Kresge, which is a major funding organization that's never funded Delaware mm -hmm. State University before. But because it's based on your association, you know, we, we got a, a major uh, million dollar grant from, from uh, the Longwood Foundation, right. which helped with the retention project. So when, you, so when you go to these funding agencies, they say, well, who's with you? I mean, who's with you? So when I can name off those names, then that right there gives them some, 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 some comfort to mm -hmm. say, okay, when I invest these dollars, I'm not only investing these dollars here, I'm investing them because M&T Bank, they are investing in our institution. So we get all those partners and that ends up supporting mm -hmm. the institution. It creates a, uh, a buzz mm -hmm. in a positive way. We still got a part three to this. We're gonna come back and talk kind of wind this up on the legacy of Dr. Harry Williams and the tenure that he's enjoyed and we've enjoyed over the last almost eight years. Thank you, Dr. Williams. We'll be right back with you on part three. And thank you for joining us for this part two. Have a good day.